Okay, it is Monday, May 10th, 2021, 9 a.m. Wilson County Commissioner's Court is now in session. We'll have the opening prayer by Mike Kendrick, a deacon at the St. Anne's Catholic Church in Laverne. Mike. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning for the opportunity to live in this wonderful and amazing country you gave us. We know that all the privileges that we have come from you. And so we ask that you give us the strength, the wisdom to protect these privileges with all the choices and decisions we make. A special blessing upon the first responders and law enforcement who are living and working in challenging times. We ask that you give them the grace and the peace that they seek so that they may do their job and protect us and, and, uh, and do everything that, that they are called to do. And Father, we ask a blessing upon all the men and women who serve this great county that they are able to make decisions and, and based on your will, everything they do, may they do that pleases you. And we ask this in your Son's name, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America. It is the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to be the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Commissioner Wiley, you still there? <coughs> okay, Commissioner Wiley, is the teleconference in? Yes, sir. Okay. Going to agenda item number three, public comments. I have none at this time, Judge. Thank you. Do we have any? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, agenda item number four, certificates of completion and awards. And we have this uh, certificate of completion, Rosalinda Sanchez, Rose Lavas, Olga Marrero, John Holcomb, and Jennifer Hausenflug have successfully completed TAC Cybersecurity Awareness Training 2021 certified uh, the 28th day of April, the 27th day of April. Is there any more? No, sir, that is it. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Okay, uh, agenda item number five, extension activity reports, the handouts that we've got. There's one judge from Corpus White, one from Samantha Shannon. Okay. Nicole still on maternity leave? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mike. questions or comments thank y'all for what y'all do we appreciate it thank you. okay now we're going to agenda item number six richard l jackson county judge courtney white texas a m extension agri life presentation of cert certificate of completion for commissioner's court leadership academy class nine session one to commissioner gary martin courtney. yes so we have an award to present this morning <coughs> i'm going to read just a little blurb about what it is exactly um, for more than 50 years, the B.G. Young Institute of County Local Government has served local governments in Texas. Since 2005, the Institute, a part of the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, has offered the Commissioner's Court Leadership Academy to further enhance the professionalism, broaden the knowledge, and enrich the experience of county judges and commissioners in Texas. CCLA involves four sessions over a two-year period three three-day sessions in Texas counties and one seven-day session in Washington, D.C. So today, 
for Commissioner Gary Martin, I have the completion of session one. Southwest Texas counties of Atascosa, Bandera, B, Comal, Demet, Edwards, Frio, Gillespie, Guadalupe, Carnes, Kendall, Kenny, Kerr, LaSalle, Livo, Maverick, McMullen, Medina, Real, Uvalde, Valverde, Wilson, and Zavala. And whereas community action has made essential contributions to individuals and families across the nation by creating economic opportunity and strengthening communities, and whereas community action has a robust state and local force connecting people to life-changing services and creating pathways to, a prosperous, to prosperity in 99% of all American counties, and whereas community action builds and promotes economic stability as an essential aspect of enabling and enhancing stronger communities and stable homes, and whereas Community action promotes community-wide community solutions to challenges throughout our city, suburbs, and rural areas. Whereas community action delivers innovative services and supports the greater the, it supports that create the greater opportunities for families and children to succeed. And whereas community action insists on community participation and involvement ensuring that all sectors of the community have a voice and will be heard. And whereas community action has celebrated 57 years of innovation impact, providing proven results for Americans. Now, therefore, we, the Commissioner's Court of Wilson County, do proclaim May 2021 as Community Action Month in recognition of the hard work and dedication of all Wilson County community action agencies. And nobody is here from Community Council, so uh, entertain a motion to accept the proclamation. Motion by Commissioner Seven. Files, second by Commissioner Cordova. Did you hear that, Judge, uh, Commissioner Wiley? I did. I did. Okay. Is there any comments or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> motion carries, so we have this. You can stop by and sign the proclamation. I'll do that. Okay, and we're going along to agenda item number eight, Richard L. Jackson County Judge, Campus of Wilson County Emergency Service District number six and Overlay District held May 1st, 
<laughs> Hope you covered your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> According to this, we had 4.77 per voter percent voter turnout. That's not real high. We had a total of 277 uh, ballots that were cast. Gosh. Out of 4,105. That's all we have. Thank you. And we did use our, this was our uh, first election that we used our new equipment. Um, everybody was very comfortable. They, they liked the machine, so um, let's see what happens in November. But everybody, pretty much, we at early voting, we only used two paper ballots. And um, on election day, we had about 30-something paper ballots. But everybody else did electronic. So we're pleased with that. But at least they're willing to try it. The main thing is the, the poll workers are getting used to them. Yes, sir. The we had training for them prior to it, and I had two classes. I had two polling locations, so uh, we trained with them, and when they went out there, they were, they were efficient. It was very easy compared to our uh, old equipment or Dominion, but uh, they really enjoyed it. It was a lot easier to shut down, and they were um, able to get here faster. So. Mr. Reno? Yes, I'm, I'm, I have verified the numbers. They all look correct. Okay. I'll make a motion, Judge, that you approve. The canvas is a vote. Motion by Commissioner Fall. Second. Second by Commissioner Martin. We approve the canvas of the votes from May 1st. <coughs> Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> okay, this motion carries, so. Okay, moving a lot along. Uh, agenda item number nine, Jeffrey Perdoe, Commissioner of Precinct 3, Barbara uh, Shanger, uh, discuss and take action on Cibolo Ridge Division of Avernia flood water from subdivision flooding powder property. I think that Barbara wanted to say something, but I have met with her this weekend. I've advised her that that is a civil matter. The county is not, doesn't control or have anything uh, to do with the detention ponds. So, uh, and again, Mr. Zimler, who owns Cibolo Ridge, has offered to repair her road uh, under the condition that she would sign a release of liability once he repairs her road. Uh, so, hey, what, what else can we do? Uh, okay, let me, let me uh, speak my piece here, please. Uh, first of all, uh, well, my name is Shan Zer, the Z, Shan Zer. Okay, Shan And I understand I'm everyone sorry. makes typographical um, errors, and there are some typographical errors in the documents that I have also. But first of all, I would like to thank this body for having me here and letting me speak about the problem that not just I am having, but also my neighbor, Mrs. Uh, Reba Stewart, is having with the Cibolo Ridge subdivision. Um, also, uh, thank you for having a prayer before this session because that tells me that there's a moral component to this decision making, not just facts and figures, but the morality of what is happening to us living down the river from uh, Cibolo Ridge. First of all, I'm here to discuss the flooding by the Cibolo Ridge subdivisions, and this has happened on two occasions. Now, let me preface this with my history. I've been on my piece of property, which is up a little on a hill from the, the exit. My property goes down, meets Reba's property, and I use an easement that comes from her property. I have been there for 30 years. I've rambled all through those woods with permission from her mother, Mrs. Cooper, and from Clarence Ellie, who also owned property. I have been through that land. I know the lay of the land. I know, every, I know the dips and curves of that land. And that land is, without Cibolo Ridge, it was incapable of flooding. 30 years, never saw flooding. When Cibolo Ridge 
put the subdivision, at first it was okay. But on August, August the 3rd of 2020, two and three quarter inches of rain came rushing down those, that subdivision, because all the culverts come down to that one detention tank goes right through. Now they say it's a detention tank, which implies it should detain the water. But the way it's shaped, it's more of a conduit, and it makes the water go faster. And so that, that they say there was a creek there. And there may have been, but it has no name. It may have been some insignificant <coughs> little dip. Now there's a raging river that came through. And on May 1st, we had five inches of rain. And it was even worse. My easement to my property is completely demolished. I have to drive through Ms. Stewart's property to get to my home. So at this time, I'm wondering if my, how that is affecting my property value. What we want to do, or what I would ask the court to do, is to find some way to divert that well. In my last calculations, that I did in uh, August, and I have documentation here. I calculated that there were a million and a half gallons of water that came through that detention tank and onto our property. Because it was a fast train, and I know they said it was a 50-year event, but here we are, eight months later, and I had another flood, even worse. But I calculated a million and a half gallons coming through there. So. If the court doesn't mind, I would like to distribute some information because I have been dealing with civil arrears since August, and so has Mrs. Stewart. We have been trying to get them to do something, and the final interaction with uh, Mr. Friesenhaw resulted in him yelling at me, uh, belittling me, not giving me a chance to speak, and hanging up the phone. So I, I, have, I have a diary here if I can get one to each. Can I come back here? You can pass them on, yes. Okay, thank you. Careful. Thank you so much. So. You can give Ms. Chapman. Yeah. Or Ms. Chapman. Okay. You have enough to give me one. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. That is the map that I drew in August of the Civil Overage Subdivision and Flood. Now, there's been a lot more construction since that time. So, there's an increased flooding. The second page that I have is a copy of the Texas Water Code that forbids people from diverting their floodwaters onto other people's property. Now, I sent, I, I'm, I'm hoping you received it, but I sent an email with videos of the flooding on Friday to each of the commissioners and to the judge. So if you had a chance to read those, the pictures don't do it justice. But when you see the video, you can see what a raging flood is. And then the third piece of paper, those contain my calculations. I did some research. I'm a reference librarian, so I know how to do research. And so I put the, those, those calculations on that sheet of paper indicating that it was over a million and a half gallons. Now the fourth sheet of paper, uh, Mrs. Stewart and I, and Mr. Gimbler, Mr. Friesenhoff, Mr. Trustee, had a meeting when they discussed the fixing of the road. I wrote the, those, wrote that up and sent it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a contract. We had a verbal agreement. But I wrote it up and sent it by a certified man, which uh, 
which um, Mr. Friesen comes up with like it all. And the last sheet of paper is the diary of interactions with Civil Bridge. And, and this, this is my diary. I have notes on every interaction I had with those people and how it turned out. So that's my information now. So I know Mr. Perdola has told me it's a civil matter. And I, I'm confused about that because I understand the county had to sign off on these permits in order for them to do that building. But my and, goal here. And we had engineers, and I had the county engineer go back and recalculate all of the, uh, everything on that subdivision. And the county engineer assures me that all of the calculations are correct. Okay. And that's all I have to go by. Okay, well, what I have to go by is my 30 years on this wandering through property looking for lost animals. And, and see, I know the lay of the land. I have that personal experience. The engineers probably don't. They're looking at facts and figures and numbers. And so I, I know that land. And the only difference between 20 years ago and today is all that concrete and all that flooding. And it has severely devalued our properties. What, what we would like this court to do, if possible, is to stop all future construction until this matter is resolved. We want Civil Ridge to divert the water away from our properties. Now, there are ways they can do it. I'm sure they can get engineers to divert the water away. And I want my road returned to its previous condition. Now, I admit it was not a perfect road, but I've driven over it for 30 years. It was drivable. I maintained it. It was old. You know, it was rocks. But it was drivable. Now, the ruts are knee deep almost. And it's just, a, it's a horrible condition. And would you, would you like to talk? Uh, has Mr. Gimber offered any resolution? They said that they were going to fix the road. What's that? Mr. Gimbler said they were going to fix the road. He hasn't offered any resolution as far as the flooding. So if the, if the road is fixed and the flooding continues, it seems to be a wasted effort. But they have offered to fix the road. They stopped getting in contact with us. Sorry, I just they stopped getting in contact with us. He they did get he was able to speak to them. They said they're still willing to if we would sign off. We've never been presented. I've been asking for documents. We were willing to sign off and release. I'm a little hesitant now because the flooding's happened again. I don't know the point of fixing her easement road if it's going to keep flooding. I understand 50 year. We seem to have unprecedented unprecedented rains lately. I don't know every year. So this is the second time in less than a year, and it, it is getting worse. So I don't, I don't know what we, if we keep fixing the road, what's going to happen every time this happens. I don't, I, it's, we think we got five inches. My husband did look at the deep, you know, the rain hit, you know, national whatever. I don't know what it's called, but it only showing 3.5 inches. I believe that's probably a little bit incorrect. I don't know where they got their numbers at. It did seem to be a little bit heavier that day. Um, and it came rushing through, but we get this all the time now, and there's no stopping it. It's, it's a why, y'all can see it on the papers. It just goes right through, and it's getting worse and worse, so what's the point of fixing it and releasing him when, if this rains again, it's all washed out again? Well, number one, the road was never a properly, properly built road. So if Mr. Gimler comes in and builds a proper road with limestone base and puts some bar ditches or some drain, there is absolutely no drainage on that road except for the ruts in the road themselves. So the water took that channel and yes, it washed out that road because there is no bar ditches, there is no drainage ditches for the water to go into. So if he comes in and fixes a properly built road, then that should solve the problem. And he's willing to do that as long as he's released of his liability He's not going to. He's I, not going to maintain your road for the next thirty years. Nobody I will say will. this: He's never offered to put any drainage in. That well, was he said not, he would fix the road, which that would be. But he never. He did not mention any drainage in the bat. It was. He did tell us what he was going to do, and it, it didn't include drainage. Just so y'all know, it didn't. He did not mention that to us. 
so we weren't aware that he was ever going to put in drainage. It's never needed it before. So now we're putting in drainage to accommodate from Cibolo Ridge down my road. That may be a solution. I don't know. But that was never mentioned to us before, the drainage. Yes, as I said, the road was never really properly constructed, so there is nowhere but for the water to run down the ruts of the road. Who owns the road? I have a legal She's got an so easement on oh, this. Mrs. is the property owner of the road itself. Mrs. Stewart owns the it's road. It's on my property. But I have a legal easement. <clears throat> and that's my only access. I have to use her road now to go to my property. There's no possible way I could sell it in that present condition. What gives them the right to dump this water on this our property? What gives them the right? Mm -hmm. Who? The Cibolo Ridge. Ridge subdivision. Oh. Yeah. What gives them the right to be able to direct? When this, when this culvert was built, and to, they, they bought the property in 2017. Actually, I think they bought it before then, but the subdivision, what they call phase one, they purchased from Clarence Ellie, and they put a road in, and they put the homes on the side, and they built this detention pond, which they will call it was lot 11, lot 12, right in there, going angling towards our property. I was concerned about it then, but I will say we had a, rain, a really bad rain in 2019, no flooding. They went ahead and purchased property next to that as well, put homes on that side of the road, and then also started phase three in 2019. I understand the engineer's number said they were correct, and they, they very well were probably when the, that detention pond was built. It was built in 2017. Phase two and three, the property wasn't even purchased yet from the other property owners to even start the subdivision. Now they have it, you can see it on Google Maps, I do have pictures. They have a huge detention pond. It's going from the top of phase three into this detention pond. Into this detention pond is flowing to the side. If you, if you would like to see pictures, I do have them. I did punch them from, or print them from um, Google Maps, I guess you could say. I do have enough for everybody. You can kind of see, this is um, also, these paperwork that I'm handing you is a picture from their Facebook page. Just, it says Cibola Ridge, it's their, um, pictures I did not alter these pictures you can see where they have it drawn up that it's going and they have all of these phases all this water going directly into this one detention pond which is now going on my property there is no way for those calculations to be made at the time it was built because phase two and three did not exist it wasn't even purchased yet so that's why I don't understand how the numbers could I, I don't disagree with the engineer if you were look at their documents when that was built I'm sure it, it was valid but now phase two and three is loading it in and sending it more and I do not it's hard for me to understand how those calculations were taken into effect when that particular phase two and three did not even exist Here's our county yes yeah. judge found you just come in very yes, quickly <clears throat> the the purpose of the approval of the plan by the county is not to provide an insurance policy for the neighboring residents and uh, so I do not understand why there's an expectation that the county has any responsibility here this is a civil matter between the developer and the landowners. Is it possible to halt construction, halt permits until this is resolved and keep it as an open option? That would be for you to see an, an attorney and I believe there would be a way to do that but you need to have your private attorney do that. Okay, if I am going to see an attorney I plan to do the labor myself. How do I access the documents that led up to the construction of the civil language? How do you want? Access documentation. What? Documents like flats, permits, drawings, calculations, the, whatever went into The law has a way of doing that. There's a subpoena that would come to each party that has documents that you want. They would be turned over. And that's why uh, you, you have to see an attorney. This is not something an individual could do themselves. So I, as a public, as a citizen, mm -hmm. cannot go in 
to the records and view these you can, yourself? You can send out uh, the county an open records request uh, and list the things you were asking for. And if we have them, uh, with very, very few exceptions, we will turn public records over to you, if that's what you would like. Uh, if it's from someone else, other than a state or county institution, you would have to send us a subpoena through your own attorney. But you can do an open records request. <coughs> Do you have any more to say? That, that concludes my presentation. And, um, Thank you. Ms. Chapman said that this is it's going to have to be a civil matter. It's for, but I would look into uh, anything that Mr. Gimbrel might help you do on your road. That is an option. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, moving right along to agenda item number 10. Richard L. Jackson County Judge Brenda L. Trevino, County Auditor, discussing possible action on disbursement of budgeted hotel occupancy tax funds for year 2021. Thank you, Judge. Um, I have given you um, a letter dated May 10th, um, Honorable Commissioners and Judge Richard L. Jackson, regarding the proposal to disperse the 2021 hotel occupancy tax funds. Per section 352.1015, use of revenue general provisions in the Texas tax code, revenue derived from the tax authorized by this chapter is to be expended in a manner directly enhancing and promoting tourism and the convention and hotel industry as permitted by the applicable provisions of this subchapter governing the use of revenue by that particular county. That revenue may not be used for the general revenue purposes or general governmental operations of the county. Wilson County currently has $63,166.80 in the hotel occupancy tax fund balance. This is the second year we are collecting the tax. It is my recommendation that we disperse part of the funds as we did last year and keep a rolling balance for use as needed in the future. Uh, the county budgeted $68,000 for disbursement. However, I feel it's in the best interest of the county to disperse funds as recommended below based on research of Wilson County organizations who promote tourism as defined in the tax code section above. And this will also leave a balance in our fund balance available for future use um, and also taking into consideration we still have five months left in this fiscal year. Um, and these are the same organizations that we, uh, that you as the court approved last year. Um, same organizations, Lavernia Chamber of Commerce, the Lavernia Greater Chamber of Commerce, the Floresville Opry, the Floresville Peanut Festival Association, the Floresville Chamber of Commerce, and the Stockdale Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm recommending a distribution total of 45,000, which will leave us a balance of 18,166.80 uh, for any other organizations that may come in and again, provide any type of uh, heads in bed, so to speak, um, in our county. Thank you for going through and doing this again. You're welcome. And, and yeah, this is something, these are funds that, that the court approved to put in a separate fund last year uh, so that we would keep an eye on it because, you know, by law, this is some, something that we have to use these funds for because we are collecting it, especially now with, uh, with things starting to open back up and people starting to move around more often, um, we're gonna start seeing more. And, and we've actually had some hotel occupancy tax revenue that has come in since um, October 1st, um, you know, despite the, the pandemic. So um, it seems that it's, it's, uh, it's growing and we're bringing yeah. heads to beds in our county and so that's good. You know, this weekend is the uh, Spring Fest for the Peanut Festival Association. Stockdale has just announced that they will be having their uh, Watermelon Jubilee, so we anticipate that our hotels will be will be full for 
the next two to three months at least. So. Yes, we got yeah five more months of this yeah. fiscal year to collect that. The hotel occupancy tax. So that's gonna if some event comes between now and then, we can still assist them. We still have a cushion, correct? a motion to I'll make a motion to uh, disperse the funds of the um, hotel or the 2021 hotel occupancy tax as presented by the county auditor second oh, second. second by well, I guess Commissioner Wiley motion by Commissioner Martin second by Commissioner Wiley uh, is there any more discussion on this all in favor Aye. Aye. Okay, so it has. So we will be dispersing that, and there's still, like I said, there's still money in this account, and there will be money added to it in case another uh, somebody comes along that's going to have a, a particular event that's going to benefit right. the heads to beds. Okay, thank you. Moving along again to agenda item number 11 is Leanne Hoshek, EMC 11A. Utility Permit 638, Southern Spring Water Supply Corporation, Precinct 4, County Road 104, Review and Approve. Okay. Excuse me, 401. Motion by Commissioner Wiley to be approved this. Second. Second by Commissioner Perdola. Is there any more discussion or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So this. Okay. Don't forget to come by and sign this, Commissioner Wiley. All right. Okay, moving along to 11B, non-standard transparencies. B1, 136 Blackjack Road, Precinct 3, Johansson, discuss and take action. I make a motion that we accept that uh, also for the variance on Blackjack Road. Okay, motion by Commissioner Cordova. Second. Second by Commissioner Martin that we accept the variance on Blackjack Road. Is there any more discussion or comments on this? Uh, yes. Ms. Hoshek, did they get all the information that we yes. asked? Yes. Okay. Yes. If you look, they added the salt pond, the they added the, the well. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Okay, 11B2, 167 County Road 402, Precinct 2, Brown, discuss and take action. Okay, this one came before the committee, it was given a favorable recommendation. Uh, the property owners are, uh, want to convey two acres which has a rental house on it. They're of an age. And this is a rental property. They're going to sell the property. They just want to add two acres to that. Yeah. Are they adding two acres to it? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve this. Second. Motion by Commissioner File, second by Commissioner Martin, and we approve this. Is there any more discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Let's carry. Okay, now we're going to 11C, subdivision, the settlement, discuss and take action on the release of letter of credit. 
Okay, and it's, it's to the point where their two-year financial guarantee uh, is up for release. Uh, the final inspection, maintenance inspection was conducted and uh, everything looked good. So uh, it's time to release their letter of credit. I did the final inspection and everything looks really good in that subdivision. So I make a motion that we release their letter of credit. Second. Motion by Commissioner Fredo. Who was the second? Commissioner Martin? No, Commissioner oh. Fowle was the second. That we release a letter of credit. Is there any more discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So this motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along to agenda item number 12. Eva S. Mortinius County Clerk Minutes. Second by Commissioner Perdola that we approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Is there any addition, correction, deletions, or any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? This carries. Okay, so we've got all this. Jan Harlow County Treasurer Financial Report, and it doesn't look like we have none. Okay. Uh, agenda item 14, Jalen T. Botter for Human Resource General Specialist, and a payroll of personnel changes. She is gone. She, her husband is in the hospital in, the hospital in Corpus. <laughs> yes, and so. I didn't, I, she didn't get one to me on Friday, so, so she usually gets it to me Monday well, morning, of course. Just take it up on the yeah. next commissioner's court meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, hope everything's okay there. So now we're going to agenda item number 15, Brenda Trevino County Auditor Bills. Okie dokie. Um, total bills is $189,255.48. She always shows up at those bills. I know it. What? <laughs> She's never even liked. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. This is all his stack of stuff, right? Yeah.
motion to approve the bills as presented. Motion by Commissioner Martin. Second. Second by Commissioner Pruitt. that we accept the bills as presented. Uh, is there any more questions, additions, deletions, comments, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. So we will approve the bill. This one. This one. <laughs> Ready to oh. Let me sign this. <laughs> okay, at 11, excuse me, 946. <laughs> we are adjourned. Not Thank you.